Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to To End All Wars in our collaborative Let's Play, uh, playing as the Eastern Entente uh, with Tortuga Power as my ally. He is playing as the Western Entente, and the Central Powers, our adversary, is being played by XTRG. This is episode number three of this series, looking at, uh, again, the Ajod World War I game called To End All Wars. Uh, this is really turn three, but or video three, but really to me seems like turn two. We've played one turn of actual combat, uh, and this is the uh, second turn of combat turns. Uh, you can see here the turn has just been resolved. Uh, tutorial, blah, blah, blah. We've got something up on the screen here stating there's a tutorial, uh, which we don't really need for diplomacy. What, I, what it looks like to me is that diplomacy for the Eastern Entente is non-existent. Uh, the Western Entente has the ability to place diplomats and other things like that, but the Eastern Entente does not seem to have that capability. Uh, you can see here there have been diplomats played uh, across the map here. You can see there have been some Central Powers diplomats sent to the Ottoman Empire. Uh, the Western Entente has sent diplomats to Italy, uh, as well as, not Serbia, where else has there been an Entente uh, member or a diplomat sent? Not quite sure. I don't really see on the map here. It looks like maybe two here in Romania as well. Uh, one by the Central Powers, one by the Western Entente. But I don't have the ability, as far as I can tell, to actually send any diplomats. I've been kind of toying around with it, and it doesn't look like I have diplomatic powers. It seems to be that part of the uh, Allies is completely in the hands of the Western Allies, so we'll have to trust them on that. Uh, meanwhile, if we move uh, back further, e further west, uh, we'll see here if we zoom in. Our armies have started to move uh, based on our turns, uh, our last turn. You can see our cavalry swinging wide west uh, to make for Memel, uh, and our infantry has moved into Gumdimnium, uh, and it looks like they've taken Gumdimnium, or there's a flag here indicating that they're in the process of taking Gumdimnium. Uh, looks like it's still actually in the uh, enemy's hands, based on what I'm looking at here. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it has uh, started to swing over into the Eastern Entente's uh, control. We have some additional army corps which are moving into, uh, I can't see that name, Goldap. Uh, they'll move in there next turn. And then we have some other army corps swinging west uh, through this forested area and driving on Welu. We will keep the main force under the first army, under Rennenkampf, in place in Gumdinium as the rest of the army moves into eastern Prussia. And we'll keep them in an offensive footing, so if the Germans do come out against us, we will try and strike at them. Meanwhile, we can see the Germans have sent some cavalry into Russia, uh, no doubt to tear up some railroad tracks and hinder our supply lines. My hope is as these infantry units here, especially this next turn, it looks like in seven days, they'll move into Tergorian. So my hopes are here with this infantry force moving into this town and then eventually to Walu, and then our cavalry force moving into Mamal. We will actually cut this German cavalry off from its base of supply. They may saw cause some havoc. I'm not sure if cavalry has the ability to forage or live off the land. Um, if we take a look here, I don't see that as an option, um, but it could be something that uh, maybe they have that capability. In any event, they'll be behind lines and they'll be cut off from any reserves, so I'm hoping that over time uh, they will be sort of made ineffective if we can cut them off from their supply lines. I don't see any options here as we select our own cavalry unit for them to forage off the land, um, but I suppose it is possible. Nonetheless, nothing here appears to give them that capability, so I'm hoping again that they're, uh, they're less made less effective. Meanwhile, our other army here that we had under our command, the, uh, is it the second army uh, under, oh, it's not the second army, oh, it is the second army, under Samsonov, uh, has advanced into eastern Prussia as well, near the Masurian Lakes. Uh, they are going to swing west and drive on the city of Thorn. Uh, you can see here we have identified a German Reserve Army Corps at Elbing. Our own cavalry is moving forward with its own mission of tearing up railroad tracks here. Uh, so hopefully they'll move in here to Brockenburg and tear up these railroad tracks, cutting off Königsberg and any German forces in eastern Prussia and delaying any German reaction, uh, thus also protecting the flank of the Second Army as it moves west from Allenstein. Um, in the further west, if we go here, we've got the third army, uh, which will eventually start moving toward Thorn. That army is now under our control. Uh, we also have the uh, eighth army, which we are going to move toward Ostrau. So we're going to move one army toward Thorn here, and we're going to move another army toward uh, Ostrau. That's going to be sort of our advance toward Berlin. 
Once they take Ostral, they'll swing north to take Posen and then drive west on Berlin itself, which is in this area. Um, the alternative option is to drive them directly west toward Breslau to sort of secure the flank, but I don't see a lot of reasons to do that at this time. Uh, Breslau is one of our objectives, actually, so maybe we will do that, because we're going to have a lot of forces converging on Thorn. We're going to have two armies converging on Thorn, then they'll drive west on Posen. So I think, actually, we'll take the 8th Army here, and we'll just advance it directly on Breslau, uh, kind of securing our flank here as well. Uh, the 7th Army Corps, maybe we'll move them toward Ostrau. I don't think the Germans have anything in this town, so it'll kind of secure the northern flank. Uh, meanwhile, actually, here we've got the... 8th Army moving, the 7th Army Corps is moving, the 21st Army Corps will move on Oplin, uh, which will, again, sort of secure our other flank. So we'll have one Army Corps on each flank and the Central Army moving on Breslau. Um, if we also look here, we can see the Germans appear to be moving some troops by railroad, uh, and we can see the Austrians also having a, a rather large army here in Krakow, uh, which will likely threaten uh, our flank. Uh, we still have this army in Warsaw, which is kind of locked down, but I anticipate if the Austrians advance toward our flank, we can move this large army, the Ninth Army, south toward Ivanrod and protect our uh, flank here in case the Germans try and make a beeline north to cut off our armies inside Germany. Additionally, we have another army here, the Fifth Army, uh, which is down here south uh, in Kowel. Uh, the Austrians appear to have an army, a couple of armies here near the border. Uh, this army is going to remain largely on the defensive to react to any German uh, drives or any Austrian drives into the heart of Russia. And then we have the 4th Army, which is directly bordering Austria itself, also will remain on the defensive. Um, I'm thinking maybe we move this army, though at the very least... We move this army toward uh, the fortifications at Donau. My only thought is leaving it here gives it more centrality to respond to any particular thrusts by the Germans. I kind of feel like he's going to make a thrust at Risen, uh, given he's moving some railroad reinforcements in here as well. Could be a drive on the Zamuk Fort, perhaps, uh, but I really feel like the likely drive is in here toward our flank, toward our supply line. So maybe we actually, I don't think we have any railroad points available for us. Uh, let's see, railroad capacity currently at maximum, so we have no railroad capacity to transport anything. Uh, that's going to limit our ability to respond to any German offensive actions. I think I will actually move the 17th Army Corps to Lublin, uh, as well as the 5th Army Corps. Two, two units that are worth about 300 firepower will leave the 17th Army itself and the other two corps, or actually, sorry, we'll leave the 5th Army itself and uh, the other two corps at Kauai, but we'll move at least two corps worth about 300 firepower to Lublin, uh, hopefully to respond to any German drive there. Uh, meanwhile, I'm not sure if the Austrians are really in a position to make a drive uh, toward Danau, but because I'm doing that, I'm actually thinking I'm going to move the uh, 5th Army itself down toward Danau, uh, if I can get them there in about six days. So they'll move that way, we'll keep them on the defensive, and uh, leave no changes there. Um, meanwhile, uh, the army at Krometsk, or however you pronounce that, is going to stay put. Uh, they could drive on Charnowitz. Uh, they've actually got quite a strong force there. It might be worthwhile trying to drive on the Austrians there, and if we can defeat them, then perhaps we can lessen the, the danger that they pose against us. So I suppose we'll do that. We'll drive in the offensive here. They won't make it this turn, but they may make it to this fort. Um, and then we'll actually... Let's do this. Let's just move them to this fort. Uh, and the rest of these troops are all going to kind of synchronize their movements here. So the rest of these troops will all move toward this fortification, all synchronizing their movements. Some of these cores are moving faster than others. But ideally, they all synchronize their movements. All right, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, if we can defeat the force at uh, Chernowitz, we may lessen the risk of Austria driving deep in on our flanks and kind of threatening our advance on Berlin itself. So remember, we're using the Berlin plan, so our objective is to drive on Berlin. We've got the majority of our forces uh, predisposed to driving on Berlin itself, 
And we've already got some forces in Eastern Prussia here. They've got some offensive postures, actually. Our cavalry here as well has an offensive posture. Uh, but our troops driving west toward Thorn. Uh, the second army is on a defensive posture, mainly because if the enemy does lunge at us, I don't intend uh, to respond in kind. I am going to go ahead and move the third army on Thorn itself. I go to an offensive posture. It doesn't look like it will let me. Yeah, so I don't have enough engagement points to... Uh, go into an offensive posture, unfortunately. But we're going to move all these forces toward Thorn. I don't think the Germans have a full-blown army there, but we're going to, nonetheless, we're going to drive all of our forces on the city and hopefully uh, overwhelm whatever defenses are there. Doesn't look like I've got the ability to go into the offensive, which could prove challenging because we may need to assault this fortification here, and if we don't, we'll just besiege it, which will tie us down for some time if the Germans have troops there. They do have a fleet. Looks like they've got a fleet of river gunboats uh, based here, but that's about it. We'll go ahead and synchronize everybody's movements, so hopefully no one gets out ahead of the rest of the force. We should be able to make it uh, potentially, maybe not, either in this turn, if not, then the very next. You know, the second army should be able to make it to their next objective to the west, uh, and this cavalry hopefully will guard its flank. The uh, 13th Army Corps, where are they moving? They're not moving at all, are they? We've got a couple of trailing cores as well, which I'm kind of breaking some rules and not keeping everything all unified, but we'll see. Got some reserve, some cores in behind the main army as well. Um, so that's where we're at right now for this turn. You can see here we're driving on Breslau with one force. Another force is driving on Thorn, and then we'll swing west to try and take Posen. Meanwhile, we've identified at least a reserve corps. Perhaps the entire 8th German army is here under Otto von Bülow, uh, the first corps. You can see reserve corps. I don't know where other German forces is. I presume they have something at Königsberg. They've got some cavalry in our rear, but I'm trying to hope. I'm hoping. I'm hoping I don't need to pay too much attention to that. And the uh, first army will kind of remain at uh, Gumdimium for the time being here. Um, but with that being said, that's kind of our drive. Uh, if we look at our update here, there have been no updates for this turn for us. Uh, there have been some updates for others. Go ahead here. Whoops. Um, if we go down here, we can see uh, tutorial diplomacy, blah, blah, blah. Fortress guns have been removed from Novo Gorovic. Go there. Um, so you can see here this fortification, actually its guns were removed, so we can go ahead and, and move these guns forward to join up this with this army. It'll take a little while, uh, but the artillery can move forward and join it. doesn't look like the rest of the troops can move. Um, where were we? If we take a look here, there really haven't been any other events. Our air fleet received some reinforcements. Um... We received some replacements for our reserve from our reserve units coming online. Um, plans for a recon of Dubno have failed. Okay, that's in our own territory as well, so that's fine. Uh, we failed to have some uh, recon missions towards some sea boxes, which are fine. Uh, the Western Entente uh, have taken after the attack of our Western Entente. Central powers have lost Luxembourg and Luxembourg. So the Central Powers have been driven from Luxembourg uh, by our good old friend Tortuga Power. Um, our army arrived in Gumdinium. All right, that's fine. We gained control of the Gumdinium region from the Central Powers. Okay, actually that answers that question. But this territory is under our control. We will nonetheless maintain our forces where they are at the moment. Um, additionally, it kind of tells us that some of those other forces are now active for us, which we already knew. And I think that's about it. There were no other battles or other things of note. Uh, again, those troops coming online in Lutz, Kromis. Various units all becoming available. Uh, troops are rapidly improving their entrenched positions in Lutz. Okay, that's great, but we're moving on the offensive from there. Um, supply networks are being set up. And you can see here that the Entente, the pro-Entente sentiment in the United States has moved 1% toward us. The pro-Central Powers in the Ottoman Empire has moved toward the Central Powers. Neutral sentiment of Holland uh, has moved, I guess, toward neutrality. They're at 50% each. Uh, Japan alignment toward the Entente. Portugal alignment toward the Entente. Uh, neutral sentiment is kind of split in Sweden. 
and the second army suffered two hits from foul weather and or exhaustion, which uh, the second army is this army here moving in this direction. So that is what it is. Gumdemnia has fallen to us, so there's no fortification there. I suppose I was mistaken by that. Uh, actually, kind of poses the idea of driving toward Weilu, this fortification, or with this force. It can get there in eight days, uh, and it'll follow the rail line here that we're trying to move across. Theoretically, I think it would also cut off the German cavalry in our rear from supplies. Uh, so I think we'll actually do that. We'll, we'll move that unit there. It'll also potentially link up with this army corps as it eventually gets there. And our cavalry here, we're not going to move them too aggressively at the enemy. We're just going to kind of cut off the enemy in the rear. I assume cavalry can exist behind enemy lines to some extent, but I'm not sure to what extent that is. Uh, we'll see uh, where, where that lies after this next turn. But that's where we are, guys. Uh, again, this is a little bit of a novice playthrough uh, from the point of view of the Eastern Entente. I don't really know what I'm doing, uh, but that's where it is. Actually, we didn't even look at Serbia. So Serbia, we've remained on the defensive. You can see some Austrian forces are coming up here to challenge us. Uh, it doesn't look like they've actually crossed the border yet. The 8th Austrian Army is still in Austria-Hungary. We've got some forces here to the west of Belgrade. We've got some forces in Belgrade itself. Uh, and uh, we're waiting for the Germans to cross the border. I can switch some of these guys to offensive postures, actually. And so I think I will do that. We'll actually switch them both to all-out assault. I'm going to switch all my Serbian troops to all-out assault. My hope is that uh, the Austrian forces aren't going to be able to uh, respond to us if they try and go aggressive and cross against us then an all-out assault posture um, will not try to retreat during the first two rounds of battle, and the retreat chance will be reduced for the rest of the day. The losses on both sides are increased, but more for your side. Okay. So we're actually going to go all-out offensive for all of our forces. I'm hoping they won't cross the border itself, but we'll see how this works. Again, I'm trying to shatter some of these Austrian troops quickly, uh, if they decide to cross the border against us. Uh, they may have higher firepower, but I'm trusting in the Alan of my Serbian troops uh, to win the day. So that's where we are, folks, at the end of the second battle phase. We'll see how everything plays out in our next video. I'm sorry this one was a little bit late. Uh, some of the holidays stuff and other things that I was working on uh, caused it to be held up a little bit. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, the wait is worth it. Uh, we shall see in the following turns what will happen and in future turns i will show you the replays it just there really wasn't much to show in this fight uh some units moving around on the map nothing really else happening so uh it is what it is guys and i hope you enjoy let me know your thoughts as always and until next time this is the historical gamer saying thank you for watching and i'm out